Frasier was a TV phenomenon that kept viewers glued to their seats from 1993 to 2004. It starred Kelsey Grammer as Dr. Frasier Crane, a witty radio psychiatrist in Seattle. Over 11 seasons and 264 episodes, this NBC show made a big impact, winning awards and amassing a dedicated fan base. In this video, we'll reveal some eye-opening secrets, mysteries, and off-screen drama that went on behind the scenes of Frasier. Facts First presents Scandals and Secrets That Happened Behind the Scenes of Frasier First, who created the show? Frasier was born from the creative minds of David Engel, Peter Casey, and David Lee. The show was actually a spin-off of Cheers, where the character Frasier Crane, played by Grammer, was first introduced. These creators took the witty, somewhat aloof psychiatrist and gave him a new life in Seattle, away from the Boston bar scene. This move proved a wise one, as Frasier went on to have its own distinct identity and following. The Ratings When it comes to ratings and critical acclaim, Frasier knocked it out of the park. Over its 11-season run, the show maintained strong viewership numbers, often raking in around 15 to 20 million viewers per episode. But what really set Frasier apart was its critical success. It won a record-setting 37 Primetime Emmy Awards during its run. The final episode alone was watched by more than 33 million people, making it one of the most-watched finales in TV history. A Roller Coaster Ride for Kelsey You might remember Fraser Crane as a charming and composed psychiatrist, but the actor who played him, Kelsey Grammer, had a turbulent life off-screen. In 1996, he ended up in the Betty Ford Center for rehab. The situation got so severe that the show even had to halt production for a while. Grammer's wake-up call came after a shocking car crash in Malibu, forcing him to seek help and get his life back on track. The Tough Love Intervention The show's cast didn't just act like a family on screen, they showed real concern for each other in real life, too. When Grammer's issues started affecting not only his life, but also the show, his co-stars stepped in. They consulted therapists and staged an intervention for him, a move that co-star John Mahoney described as one of the hardest things he'd ever done. The intervention worked, though. Grammer once again checked into rehab, this time with the backing of his on-screen family. David Hyde Pierce's Initial Doubts Sometimes first impressions can be deceptive. David Hyde Pierce, who played Niles Crane, wasn't initially a fan of the script. He felt his character was too similar to Frasier and that it could ruin the show. It wasn't until the table read that he changed his mind, realizing that having two peas in a pod could actually be a strength. Jane Leaves almost didn't make the cut. Can you even imagine Daphne Moon being portrayed by someone other than Jane Leaves? Well, that was almost the case. Kelsey Grammer wasn't initially thrilled with the idea of Leaves taking on the role, thinking her British accent might make the show feel too much like the 70s sitcom Nanny and the Professor. But a one-on-one -on -one meeting changed everything, and Leaves quickly won Grammer over. The show that almost wasn't Before Frasier became the hit show we know today, the initial pitch was for something entirely different. The concept was for Kelsey Grammer to play a disabled media mogul, a pitch that was quickly shot down by network execs as one of the worst ideas they'd had. The Dog Days on Set Martin's dog, Eddie, was cute on screen but not so cuddly behind the scenes. John Mahoney, who played Martin, and Kelsey Grammer had their share of issues with the pup, who was known to be a bit of a biter. And as Moose, the dog who portrayed Eddie, grew older, the tension even spread to his son and replacement, Enzo. The religion that kept Kirstie away Cheers alums often made guest appearances on Frasier, but Kirstie Alley was a notable exception. Due to her beliefs in Scientology, which conflicts with the concept of psychiatry, she steered clear of the show. David Hyde Pierce's Private Life David Hyde Pierce, a.k.a. Niles, kept his sexuality a secret throughout the show's 11-year run. It wasn't until three years after the series ended that he openly acknowledged his relationship with Brian Hargrove, confirming they were married. A Heartbreaking Loss The cast faced a devastating tragedy when one of the show's co-creators, David Engel, and his wife were killed in the 9-11 attacks. The loss deeply affected everyone involved in the show. The Origin of the Catchy Theme Song You've probably found yourself humming along to Frasier's iconic theme song. The interesting thing is the tune was crafted with a unique set of instructions. 
The creators wanted a jazzy song, but were clear about avoiding any terms related to psychiatry, radio shows, or even the name Frasier. That's how we got this oddly relevant tune that refers to mixed up things much like Frasier's own patients. Why Seattle and not Denver? Originally, the creators thought about setting the show in Denver, Colorado, but an anti-gay law in the state made them change their minds. Wanting to align with progressive values, they chose Seattle, Washington as the backdrop. A surprising age gap. John Mahoney was actually only 15 years older than Kelsey Grammer, who played his son. Surprisingly, this age difference aligns pretty closely with their characters' ages on the show. Frasier and Cheers, a tangled web. While Frasier was a spinoff from Cheers, there were some inconsistencies. On Cheers, Frasier claimed his father was a research scientist, but we see him as a retired cop on Frasier. And let's not forget, both John Mahoney and Perry Gilpin appeared on Cheers in entirely different roles before joining Frasier. A brotherly addition. David Hyde Pierce was so perfect for the role of Niles that the character was created just for him. Originally, Frazier was supposed to be an only child, but after seeing Hyde Pierce, the creators knew they had to write him in. The Mysterious Maris Maris, Niles' first wife, was a character we heard a lot about but never saw. Initially, the writers toyed with the idea of revealing her but decided against it, as her described quirks made her, quote, uncastable. Daphne's weight gain explained. Jane Leaves was pregnant during the show's eighth season. To cover this up, the writers had her character gain weight due to overeating, which was later explained away as a 9-pound, 12-ounce weight loss, exactly the weight of her newborn daughter. Star-studded Collins One fun part of watching Frasier was guessing the celebrities who voiced Frasier's radio callers. Big names like Jay Leno and Eddie Van Halen were among the many who lent their voices to the show. Kelsey Grammer's Unique Method Kelsey had a one-of-a-kind approach to acting. He would rehearse only once and barely memorize his lines before shooting. It gave his performance a spontaneous energy that many found captivating. The untimely recasting of Roz Just a few days into the production of Frasier, the show's producers felt that Lisa Kudrow, who initially played Roz, wasn't the right fit. They thought Kudrow's portrayal would let Frasier overshadow her character, leading to a lack of conflict. They quickly recast it, bringing in Perry Gilpin to play the sharp-tongued radio producer. Gilpin had her own set of initial difficulties. During early rehearsals, she felt the pressure of living up to the role and even experienced tension with Kelsey Grammer. At one point, Grammer reportedly wished his former Cheers co-star, Kirstie Alley, was there instead. But Gilpin found her footing and added her own unique flair to the role of Roz. A Hidden Struggle with Fame John Mahoney had his own difficulties adjusting to fame. Unlike his co-stars, he didn't relish the spotlight and yearned for a quieter life away from the glitz and glamour. After Frasier ended, he moved back to Illinois, far from the limelight of Hollywood. A Personal Mission Against Alzheimer's David Hyde Pierce has been involved in Alzheimer's research for over two decades. The cause is close to his heart, as he lost both his grandfather and his father to the disease. He received an award for his humanitarian work in 2010, making it clear his off-screen life was just as impactful as his on-screen one. Now it's time to hear from you. Which of these Frasier facts was most surprising to hear? Let us know in the comments section below.